Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that pop up on these vehicles. We also do it to make sure the sellers that are selling them are being upfront. They're disclosing everything, at least so we can tell. And then also we are just, I'm a big Land Cruiser enthusiast. I'd assume you are too. And yeah, so it's just kind of fun to talk about these. And yeah, the one we've got today is yeah, spectacular. Uh, basically a museum piece. So this is a 1997, uh, you know, just under 5,000 mile uh, Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series. So this has got the one FZ FE motor. This is the last year, the 80 series, kind of the, you know, the cream of the crop. Uh, a couple things, you know, that kind of detract from this being like the total unicorn would be it, and we'll get into the details. It's not a collector's edition or an anniversary edition, as you can see. There's no, you know, badges and, um, you know, that's just really apparent just from looking at the front. And then also as we go through the description, you'll see there's no front and rear lockers. Um, there could be some other things that would make it like even more rare and more valuable, um, which would be like a poverty pack, you know, not having like a sunroof or having cloth interior and so on. But this is just kind of like a, a basic Land Cruiser. What makes it rare is that it's only got, you know, like 5,000 miles. So, so this is going to be more an exercise of can we identify anything wrong whatsoever with it? Uh, it should be pretty much perfect. Uh, but, you know, it's still, it's gone down the road, you know, 5,000 miles. And, you know, there could be little things here or there. And we'll try and go through those. Uh, one of the biggest things, you know, thinking about a, you know, vehicle that's 26 years old now, it's got, uh, it's, you know, more or less been sitting for, um, you know, or very low usage over that time period is, you know, the the rubber components and, you know, the plastic components, they're all 26 years old. Uh, some of them maybe haven't been replaced. And so, you know, you could imagine, you know, that being an issue. However, you know, some of the things due to, you know, uh, some of the deterioration mechanisms from heat or from sun damage. Yeah, that's not going to be a thing really with this vehicle. So it's located in Pleasanton, California, just down the road from me. Uh, it's being sold by McFly 1985. Uh, let's see. It's got 4,700 miles. Uh, you can see the locking center differential. It says pearl white paint. Pearl white wasn't sold on the Toyota Land Cruiser. So that's yeah, probably just the, yeah, the super white uh, color. And let's see. It's got oak upholstery. Everything else is pretty much standard. It's got a clean Carfax report. Uh, let's go through the details here in the text. Uh, let's see. So everything's standard. So acquired by the selling dealer in 2021, uh, this 80 series is now offered at no reserve with the owner's manual, a truck cover, a clean Carfax report, and a clean California title. So again, pearl white. It's not pearl white, but it's got a sunroof. So just kind of like all the normal things, nothing really unusual about the spec here on this vehicle. Uh, yeah, the interior <laughs> is mint. Uh, it's got some Michelin Defender uh, tires. Those are in the, I believe, the stock size, but they're not, probably not the original. I'd be surprised if those are the original tires. Uh, and let's see. Yeah, steering wheel looks good. Everything else is just regurgitating like the normal listing details here. Uh, 212 horsepower, 275 pound-feet of torque on that uh, 1FZ FE engine. Uh, let's see. So nothing else there. So the Carfax report, no accidents or other damage unless registration in California through its most recent entry in 2021. The car is titled in the state of California, but is not currently registered. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the Carfax report. So it shows one owner at, in California. So yeah, it looks like it was in the San Diego area. So kind of, you know, yeah, Southern, uh, Southern California. And then it was serviced at car zone in Reno, Nevada. Not sure yeah, why it would have gone up there, but if you go through the video here, so this gentleman that you're seeing in this little thumbnail, uh, sounds like he is a consignment person. So he's selling it on consignment. Usually car, uh, bring a trailer mentions that in the listing. That's not being disclosed here. Uh, sounds like maybe he owns it. So this is what's really confusing about it. So the Carfax shows one owner, uh, acquired by the selling dealer in 2021. And you know, we don't see that he titled it. So um, yeah, it's just a little curious. Um, you know, probably not a big deal. Nothing shows up on the um, vehicle history. So yeah, we're kind of left with it as it is. All right, so there's a video of him going through the paint readings. He says, I think in the comments that they're, you know, it's all original. I'll kind of take that at face value. If there's anything that kind of catches my attention from the uh, from the photos, yeah, maybe we can, you know, go into detail there. But yeah, just some of the things that we're going to want to look at, you know, right 
at the beginning is just trying to make sure that it's all original, looking for anything that just doesn't make sense. Um, so right off the bat here at the front, and hopefully we get a nice like front image, this center grill is kind of shifted to the right. You can see there's almost like a, I don't know, like an eighth or a quarter of an inch uh, gap here where it's nice and tight. Um, not sure what to make of that yet, but that's the thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Everything else looks nice and shiny. Just a couple little like rock chips on the front bumper. Not really seeing any on the hood, at least in those close-up shots. All right, moving around the vehicle. Uh, yeah, some of those photos weren't weren't the best, but yeah, looks looks pretty good as you would expect. And yeah, nothing really out of place. Um, just keep an eye at these these gaps in the panels. Make sure it all kind of makes sense. Yeah, everything looks uniform. Not really seeing any defects. Not quite sure why they're including the the blurry photos in there, but. All right, working around the back, they've applied some uh, reflectors here to the lower hitch, and then they've mounted this kind of, uh, I think it's like a printle type uh, mount. Yeah, so that's something that wouldn't have come from Toyota, at least here in the United States. Uh, some additional reflectors up here, some stickers. Uh, you can see this, they've got this like little flag thing going on here. Yeah, that's not a factory uh, like decal or sticker, nor is this fuel injection those are look like they're, they're kind of like I get a GM like mid nineties like GM vibe from them so I'm not not quite sure why they would do that. Uh, yeah, I'd remove those. I would have removed those for the cell. I'm I know maybe they're a little worried about damaging the paint, but you know that's a thing I guess. Uh, and then yeah, something else here on this front uh, passenger side fender, another sticker. Let's see if we can tell what it says. Whoop. Let me get back in there. Hang on. Yeah, not quite sure what that that is there. I'm sure we'll get a detailed shot. But yeah, body looks good. Nothing nothing really jumping out at me there. Yeah, the biggest thing is that gap. You can see it right here. It's definitely like this lower valence is kind of, you know, down into the right. You can see it's nice and tight here on the passenger side. And then it loosens up as you get to the driver's side. I don't know. I don't think Toyota would let it go looking like that. Not back in the 90s, but, you know, maybe. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, paint looks good. There's your etchings, um, or at least one etching on the glass. Uh, as far as, you know, looking for signs of repaint, yeah, this gasket um, hasn't been painted, so that's that's good. Running boards look good. I mean, the body looks clean. Paint looks great. Uh, the color on this roof rack is interesting. I, th I thought that they were all, like, kind of black um so that that color kind of cut me off guard a little bit yeah that's it's curious it's also i mean at least it's consistent with these um with the kind of like the luggage rack uh what do you call them supports or whatever that go on the ribs here of the roof um yeah i don't know just a different color than what i would expect maybe it's nothing all right fuel door looks good Rear lights look good. Yeah, it's just a it's just a beautiful truck. Uh, it's really a shame that it's, you know, while again it's rare because it's got low mileage, just a little uh, scratch there. It looks like, yeah, the mileage, the low mileage makes it rare, but yeah, it's just kind of like a plain Jane <laughs> spec, which you know kind of feels silly saying since it's yeah so nice. Maybe a little bit of chip there on the uh, that door handle. But yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's a beautiful looking truck. I wonder if the, uh, the, one of the common things with these line cruisers is that the mirrors wobble. I wonder if these are wobbling yet. Probably not. Yeah. What's with the random, like limited badge? I don't know. The paint, some, like it kind of has a little bit of like a pearl look to it. I'm gonna have to look at those paint that paint video, but all this, yeah, nothing, nothing really jumping out at me here. I mean, is there a color difference there between the fender and the hood? Probably not. <laughs> but there's definitely like a yeah a gap in this lower valence there. So that's that's curious. 
Yeah, look, that's pretty big. Yeah, no, no signs of you know, of paint that I've seen here. Little mark there on the mirror. All right, moving to the wheels and look at the undercarriage too that you can tell you know, that all looks nice and clean. Um, the little, you know, pinch weld here in that joint, that seam, that looks good. We only got one side, so you'll notice we only got pictures of three wheels. So I don't know if they're trying to hide something on that fourth one, but yeah, so there's confirmation. It doesn't have the locker, but yeah, the interior looks clean enough to make up for that. I mean, look at the look at the leather seats too. <laughs> Just compare it to all like the ratty ones. And look, the seat belt is properly retracted. I don't know. Does it is it a Land Cruiser when the seatbelt doesn't retract properly? <laughs> That's so nice. Oh man. Yeah, it's already bid up to like a hundred and what, hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yeah, the carpets look super clean. Yeah, I'd be totally terrified to even like look at this thing in person uh like i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't want to get in it i mean it deserves to be used certainly but um yeah i don't know maybe it's better served in a museum i'm trying to think if the line cruiser heritage museum has if their 80 series that they have are just as good as this they they have their 40th anniversary um but it's not in as good a shape as this one I wonder if uh, yeah, I wonder if old Greg Miller's gonna bid on this thing. Anyway, so this is yeah, four thousand six hundred and sixty miles. Little, little scratch there. Somebody missed the keyhole. Look at that. There's like a little. I didn't know that. There's a little Toyota logo there on this uh, this wood trim or this kind of like overlay. That's yeah, amazing. It's basically like a museum piece. Um, you know, it's an example. And that's part of the reason like why I do some of these videos is to like memorialize this. You know, should bring a trailer not be there. Maybe YouTube will continue and yeah, people can enjoy this, you know, and get a sense for what it looked like when it was brand new. Um, because this is as you know, as close as it's going to get. Um, but yeah, look at the gear selector. It's just yeah, it's amazing. And look. You can see the little whoop, the little rubber uh, yeah the little rubber piece between the two center consoles and the little carpet piece. I don't understand how that gets lost over the years. I, I don't know. Maybe somebody like vacuums it out. But but yeah, very few scratches on this uh, yeah this wood trim panel. Yeah, it looks ex exquisite. It's very nice. Yeah, not a not a whole lot to uh, not a lot to talk about here. You've even got it looks like a little bit of like grease here, you know, to you know keep the noise down and stuff. These rockers look good. We've got good Vince stickers. The leather looks good. The nets aren't saggy. I wonder if like on these nets, you know, this the rubber that's in there, it can certainly age. And I think I remember on my. 100 series there's like a in one of the rear cargo area like pockets or the little cubbies that's back there there's like a little uh elastic and i remember when i opened that up and pulled it the like i heard kind of like this like cracking as the you know the the hardened rubber it gave up the ghost and yeah it was no longer elastic so yeah i wouldn't ever try and uh yeah pull those just leave them leave them be <laughs> But yeah, look at that. It's just so pretty. One thing I also noticed, I think maybe the, the headliner changed in subsequent years. Um, but yeah, I don't recall. So it might be like a 97 only thing, but like the 95. Because I know there's a headliner difference between the 94 and the 95. But I don't remember. See how this speaker is kind of like sticking out? It's kind of like proud from the rest of the ceiling. I don't remember that being the case on... Um, yeah, on, on like a 95. So I'm curious if that's different. I'll have to go back and look at some other listing photos and see what you can see. But yeah, look at this interior. I mean, it's super minty. Yeah, even the uh, the little plastic here with this vent, it's, yeah, they're, they're not broken. 
It's a very common thing. So with it already being at like 110, yeah, the least they could do is yeah, tuck this thing in there <laughs> um, for the photos. But anyway, with it already being at 110,000, like that's, uh, you know, that's Heritage, you know, 2020, 2021 Heritage Edition money with similar miles, you know, like 5,000 miles. I don't know. I think you'd be, unless you're putting this in like a museum, you'd much better be much better served with the Heritage Edition. I think even long term, I'm curious if you if you were to take because they're about the same value, right? So a, a brand new 1997 Lion Cruiser, you know, 4,700 miles like this one, or a, you know, basically brand new 2020, 2021 Heritage Edition, you're going to pay the same price in today's dollars. Uh, I wonder which one long-term does better price-wise. I don't know. I think my bet would be on the 2020, 2021 Heritage Edition. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? If you've got a if you an opinion on that, which one do you think would go up in value more over the next, like, let's say, five, ten years? Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. But yeah, this is super nice. Hopefully I'm not going through these too quickly. This is probably the most boring video ever, too. Nice, uh, nice uh, like, light on the photos, too. It's good to see, like, the nice texture in the uh, in the headliner. And in the plastic trim, just yeah, nice, nice lighting. And there's tons of photos too. There's 430 photos. All right, moving here to the rear. Um, yeah, the, that rear tailgate carpet looks great. Yeah, not a lot. You know, like on this side, kind of stainless steel piece. There's yeah, really no scuffs. It looks amazing. Yeah, I remember in the uh, early on with the videos I've been doing from, you know, like bring a trailer listings, there was a collector's edition, uh, like a red one. And yeah, these bolts had been turned. So it's good to see that they provided that photo. It's good to also see that yeah, those bolts haven't been turned. Uh, so this one, yeah, it's likely got original paint, at least based on that, on that part. Yeah. Yeah, and for all those that live in, you know, like the Northeast or in the Rust Belt, yeah, this is what this handle is supposed to look like. And these bolts, yeah, they're not supposed to be all rusted out and gross. And same thing, like the, the, this little knob here for the lock, yeah, that always, yeah, breaks as these age. Look at the tool roll. It looks brand new as well. And the bottom of this isn't rusted. <laughs> and there's not a bunch of dirt. <laughs> not a bunch of dirt and dust. Yeah, this is nice. All right, moving to the engine bay. Uh, we've got a vent sticker here on the far side, on the driver's side. Uh, and you know, all this, you can see all the, you know, the platings there, all the original finishes. It looks pretty good. Again, like the gasket material for the valve cover gasket, it's got to be pretty old. Uh, I'd really be surprised if some of that maintenance has been done. Um, but, you know, as it gets driven, yeah, you'll likely see. But again, while it is old, it, you know, hasn't been heat cycled and heat soaked as much as, you know, one with like 200,000 miles. So maybe, maybe it does a little bit better. I don't know. I'd be curious to see what type of maintenance this requires if it were to be yeah driven you know daily from here on out. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can see that one of the common things that you know that fails on these is this wiring harness kind of retainer clip like right about here it causes it to push up against this little nut for the EGR kind of. But you can see how it's being retained away from it and it's yeah, and its original. Uh, location just kind of cool to see that also what's interesting for this a lot of these clips for these you know like this is a cruise control cable or for the throttle yeah it's cool to see like what i presume is the original routing for some of this stuff and where it's retained yeah, it's just kind of neat to see all this in place this is i mean these are great photos for yeah reference if you're looking for yeah, something that's like missing on your vehicle or yeah how something should be uh yeah this, this is a good source to go to
yeah, but all these all these hoses, I mean, they're twenty something years old. Uh, yeah, maybe not as affected by the heat. And maybe this is like the radiator is a good example. So like this appears to be the original radiator. Seems like it's in great shape. Um, you know, the normal kind of how they get like yellow, like you don't see any of that. And it's because, you know, heat can affect these plastics. And yeah, so maybe, you know, maybe like the, you know, leaks and things failing, maybe, maybe it's not as bad as you would think. Same thing with like this rubber or the foam here. It looks, you know, just as good as it did on, on day one. Yeah, there's an interesting stain here on the back of the firewall. That's kind of the best photo we've got. Not, not quite sure. You can see how there's just some like residue there. Yeah, not sure what I'd make of that. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it looks super clean. It's the right color too. If uh, it's probably a safe bet to yeah to buy this and and not not lose your hat on it. Um, although prices are super inflated, even for something like this. So yeah, I don't know if if the market kind of turns down. Yeah, it could be bad. Yeah, so I don't know exactly what this is. Um, yeah, some sort of indicator maybe of how long it's been been running. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I wonder if it, yeah, what what makes that work? Does it like run coolant through it or something? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if you know when the what this is, yeah, leave a leave a comment. All right, moving to the undercarriage. Yeah, it looks looks good. There's looks like there's some you know under under carriage you know kind of like spray that was applied probably at some point. Uh, interesting texture here on this uh, skid plate and on the frame rails. I don't know these pictures compared to the other pictures here. Yeah, those pictures suck. Hopefully, we get some better ones. Yeah, not impressed with the undercarriage photos thus far. At least the spares mounted in the correct direction. Uh, I will note that this, yeah, the spare doesn't match the, um, yeah, the other four. That could be the original tire on the spare. Yeah, these photos are terrible. Yeah, like it, it's not even really possible to tell if it's like leaking. These photos are so bad. Um, maybe a little bit of shine here in the bottom of the front diff. I, I don't know. The, these photos, yeah, they really need better photos if they want, you know, like top money out of it. Uh, kind of an interesting thing here. You can see some of this. I, I think this is, you know, like seam sealer. You can see how some of it's cracked. That's where rust can start. Uh, also, this is under, so this is on the passenger side. Uh, underneath that front valence panel. Yeah, it was, yeah, nothing, I don't know, there's a little like wave there. Yeah, that's interesting. Not sure if that's the reason why we, um, why that valence panel is kind of like shifted to the driver's side, but. You know, the undercarriage photos, yeah, leave a lot to be desired, that's for sure. But there's all your VIN stickers and your labels. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know, $110,000. That's quite a, quite a bit. <laughs> uh, again, compare this to like a brand new, brandish new, um, yeah, 200 series, like a Heritage Edition. Uh, and obviously the, I think the price is probably going to go up. I don't even know where to, what a, where to throw a number. It's already way, way more than what anybody reasonable should pay. Um, probably just you know, museum people or people who just want a cool truck in their garage, like this, <laughs> this house in the background. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's throw a number out there that, yeah, it, maybe it'll go up to like one, I don't know, 170. I don't know. 170. That's my guess total shot in the dark, but pretty cool to go through it. Um, yeah, I'd love to see somebody actually yeah, daily drive it and put it to use, but I uh, would also hate to see it yeah, get mistreated or destroyed or in an accident or something like that. Cause it's just kind of a cool timepiece, but 
um, you know, it's meant to be enjoyed. It's just a, just a thing. And, you know, just keeping things for, <laughs> for no reason without it using them. Yeah. It seems kind of silly, but, um, uh, it's probably served its purpose as an investment, uh, as was kind of indicated by the, you know, the guy in the video. Um, so yeah, whether or not values will keep going up or whether, yeah, something like this will yeah, dip a little, it's to be seen, but and whether or not it's better than just buying like a 200 series, which is readily available, um, you know, and holding on to that and kind of doing the same thing that's been done, you know, is what's been done to this. So anyway, interesting vehicle. Nonetheless, we'll see yeah, where it ends up. Yeah. I guess 170 is, is my guess. Uh, yeah. Let me know. Let me know what you think. No, no nobody really like leaves guesses, but yeah, pl please do. I'm curious as you know, to what, what the consensus is on yeah, where this might end up. So all right, and let's maybe put it this way: if you uh, yeah, if you like guess it right on, I'll reach out and uh, I'll I can send you like a Land Cruiser Project sticker or something like that. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have a good day, and yeah, take care of yourself. See ya.